I heard, you know, we were talking about forgiveness earlier and we're d they mentioned turning down the flame. Well, you know, for me, the turning down the flame is turning down the volume that's going on in my head. That's really important. And I have tools to do that. In the first place, if I don't go somewhere every morning and turn down that volume that I wake up with, I'm going to leave with uh, the next person that crosses my path is going to trigger me. And then the next person is going to trigger me. And then the next person's gonna trigger me. And I'm gonna carry trigger to trigger to trigger to trigger to trigger all day long until I go to sleep and then I can't sleep because my mind's racing. That's the volume I have to turn down. I have to stop and meditate and go to God. I have to ask, how am I behaving at this moment in God's eyes? Now this is from somebody that was a, almost a complete atheist because I used to blame God for all my problems. And um, understanding that God has always had my back, has allowed me to go to a place of accountability. See, a higher power is an accountability for me. If I want to turn down the volume, I have to behave a certain way. And in order for me to behave a certain way, I have to have a conscious contact with my higher power constantly. So if I get triggered the first time, I stop, I stop that trigger there and then. I stop and I think about how would God want me to behave at this moment in time. And if I could do that instead of going from trigger to trigger to trigger, I promise you I'm going to have a better day. Um, as far as the, uh, so turning down the volume is so important, and then, you know, low, lowering the expectations on myself. I am so hard on myself. You know, I wake up again. That's another thing that was just turning down the volume is accepting who I am, good and bad, man. You know, not going out there and having to, uh, to, uh, to achieve and achieve and win and win. Man, I'm just chasing my tail. How am I behaving to others is, is really what matters, I think, as opposed to, what can I get? What can I take? Um, and then the amends uh, part, they kept mentioning amends. I have to tell you a really quick story I'm gonna try to do in less than 30 seconds. When my mom died, um, oh, is that it? Oh, I have one minute. Okay, so when my mom died, um, I was, I had, a, I had a, all, everybody in my family suffered from mental illness, drug addiction or whatever. And uh, I had my uh, one sister, she had schizophrenia and, and she, uh, she tried to kill me once when I was a little kid. And I, uh, she was another one that I had on my list of people who I couldn't stand. And she, <laughs> she, she could, but she couldn't take care of herself. So my mom never saw me spiritually healthy or at least attempting to be spiritually healthy. So my amends to my mom for always blaming her for my problems was I took care of my sister. And my sister had no idea that I was doing it for my mom and not her. Do you know what I mean? I would pay her bills, I would take her food, I would pay, I would you know, bring, her, bring her whatever she needed. And that was an amends to make for my mom. The reason I'm telling the story is because the healing that we go through is just priceless. How could I have done this without the program? I have some friends that have never found the program that I grew up with. I feel so sorry for them. I wish, I wish they would find help like we have. Thank you. That little boy's social skills that most little boys learn from their parents, I learned from other five-year-olds, you know? And the little five-year-olds I hung out with were also well, kids that were pretty messed up. So we were teaching each other social skills. That's why I'm also screwed up today, because I never knew how to behave. I ran away from home when I was 15. It was either that or, did, or do what a lot of kids that were starting to do at that age, and some were committing suicide. Some of them were becoming very severe in their shortcomings where they became <coughs> mentally ill themselves. And I thought I was mentally ill. I, I, really, I didn't have no other s way to, to, to figure out what my condition was. Um, running away, I would steal and, and rob, and I used to get arrested a lot. I spent a lot of time locked up as a kid. So I used to stay in my head all the time. Well, here's a kid that's in his head all the time that's coming from low self-esteem. I hate the word self-loathing. I'm going to use it. Self-loathing. <laughs> um, but having no connection with humanity N and having no trust with adults at all because not only was it crazy at home, but the clergy at school contradicted themselves all the time. So I have the social skills of a feral a feral child, the social skills of a feral animal almost, you know? I could 
I felt stupid. I didn't understand English. I came here from Central America when I was five years old. And uh, they put me, they didn't have ESL, they put me in a school with people speaking English. I had no idea what they were saying. And so I'd sit there for eight hours a day, <laughs> just staring at the wall, in my head now. Now I'm, I'm an untreated little allotine in the making, even though I never found allotine, you know what I mean? <laughs> I wish, but no. It's just, you know, you know, I have no regrets now, because from now on, on I've changed how I see things. One of the things, the way I looked at my parents is I hated them. I could not stand my parents. And how could there be, I see there, how could there be a God? On my inventory, the top three were father, mother, no, yeah, father, mother, God. Those were the three that were in my inventory. How the hell am I going, in the first place, how am I going to look at my end in this? It's a little boy, right? Well, there is. I'm going to tell you a little story about it. First of all, all right, I'm going to tell you a little story that happened recently. A lot of you know um, that we're going into the jails. Uh, we have an Al-Anon panel going into the jails. And uh, we've been going in there about seven months now. And we get pretty we have four minutes. We get, uh, we get a lot of attendance, anywhere from 40 to 65 usually a week. And a lot of them are mothers. So I was telling this little story about when I was a kid, uh, straight from Guatemala, right here in this big city with all these big buildings. I'm on Alvarado and Wilshire. It's like I'm just fascinated with everything. And we come out of Thrifty's, and these two store detectives grab my mom and take her inside. And they said something to me. I didn't, they don't speak Spanish. So I, I figured they told me to stay. So I just stayed. So anyway, I ended up going in there. And they were arresting my mom for shoplifting, right? So I'm telling the inmates this story. A lot of them are mothers, right? So I go inside, and they're, my mom's handcuffed, and you know what I mean? It's like, this is like really weird. So because I had so much anger towards my mom and unresolved issues, for most of her life, I used that against her. I would say, yeah, well, you shoplifted in front of me when I was a little boy. How could you do that? Once I found program and I started writing on it, I remembered she stole a little toy because she did not want me to go to a birthday party without a present for another little boy. She did the best she could with what she had. You know what I mean? She's not on the top of my inventory list anymore. I'm doing another one on my fourth step right now. She's not even on it. My dad, alcoholism, it's not, he didn't choose it. You know what I mean? But I used to d always blame him. You were never home, you didn't have a job, you were a bum, you know what I mean? I used to throw it in his face. I visited his ashes recently, first time in 35 years. The sad thing is it's the first time in 35 years that anyone has ever visited his ashes. That's how deep and dark our family tree is. Um, he did the best he could with what he had, you know? Um, and then the God thing. How could there be a God, man? You know, there's a day that I remember wanting to jump in front of a bus. Yeah. You know what I mean? That was my only solution to my pain was to jump in front of a bus. But my first grade teacher said, put it in our head, after I finally learned English, she goes, the only unforgivable sin is suicide. You could do anything else. <laughs> you could <laughs> off somebody if you want, we'll forgive you. But you can't off yourself. So I didn't want to jump in the front of the bus and then the next person I'd see is Satan. <laughs> so, I, <laughs> so, I, so I passed on that. <laughs> I told you the, the little story about what I told the inmates in the jail. And these mothers were tearing up. They were so emotional when I told them because so many of their mo are mothers and they want to be forgiven by their children for what they've done. And it was such a spiritual connection with humanity that I had at that moment that I had this spiritual buzz going, a spiritual buzz. And I'm on this motorcycle, super fast motorcycle. I'm doing 80 if I'm on the 105 and the 110 with the HOB. I'm 200 feet off the ground. I'm listening to Led Zeppelin, the skyline, <laughs> the, the, sky, the LA skylines in front of me with the Ice Cat Mountains in the background. I got this spiritual buzz going, right? 
I'm listening to Led Zeppelin, I change the channel, and it plays I'll Always Love My Mama. She's my favorite girl, you only get one, you only get one. You know what I mean? I started crying. I've never cried for joy in my life, ever. I've never cried for joy in my life. So I'm crying in my helmet, <laughs> which is not safe because all of a sudden my shield is wet. <laughs> so I slowed down, obviously. So I went back to the jail panel the following week. And I told the, ju the, the inmates, same inmates, I told them the story. They knew that. I already told the story about my mom shoplifting and the little toy. But when I thanked them for giving me my joy, I told them about the station. I always love my mama. I, I thanked them for, for them, giving, allowing me to have the experience to learn joy for the first time in my life. Um, we're out of time, right? Okay. And God is the, just the last one. God has always had my back. I know it now. When I stop blaming him for my problems and realize that I'm very fortunate to be alive today, he's had my back. Anyway, 